So you want to use your computer live on stage to perform with Ableton Live. How do you set it up to use an audio interface for audio output? Hey, this is Will Doggett, Ableton Live certified trainer, founder from Studio to Stage. Today I'm gonna to show you how to set up an audio interface, no matter what brand, how many outputs to use with Ableton Live, live on stage. So let's get started. So for the sake of this example, I'm gonna be using the Play Audio 12 from iConnectivity. I love this interface that has 12 outputs, built-in redundancy, but again, it doesn't matter what type of interface, it's all the same concept and same uh, principles apply. The very first thing you wanna do when you get your interface is make sure you've updated it to the correct firmware, and if your interface requires drivers, boo, but if it does, make sure you've updated your drivers as well and have those installed on your machine. So next thing you wanna do is connect your interface, and if it requires power, make sure that you've powered it up properly. Now head into live and open lives preferences, which is command comma, and we want to go to the audio tab. Now in the audio tab, we can choose both our audio input and audio output. Uh, when I'm primarily on stage, I'm not processing internal audio or not processing like a vocal mic or anything. So I leave input set to no device. And for audio output, what I'm going to do is choose play audio 12. Now in your situation, make sure to choose whatever audio interface you have connected. The next thing I want to do, because I'm only using output, outputs is click output config. And then here I'm going to be able to define, do I want to use uh, mono outputs or stereo outputs of this interface? And you can do both. So what I like doing is definitely enabling all the mono outputs. So I'm going to do that here. And then maybe just a few stereo outputs. Now the more you enable, the more CPU it uses. Um, I've never had any issues. So I go ahead and enable them all until I do. And then I can always go back. The other thing you can also do here is name your outputs. So you could call this output one. Now this output two, if you want. Uh, I personally don't like doing that. I just wanna see it as one and two on the interface. But if you're using like a Motu Ultralight uh, to where three and four is actually one and two, or something's weird about your outputs on your particular interface, you can rename them here and it's gonna save you tons of headaches. So again, I'm gonna leave this blank. Now the next thing I'm gonna be concerned with is choosing our sample rate. Now if your setup in your interface allows it, then you can click the drop down here and choose a sample rate that works for your interface. In most situations, 44.1 is perfectly fine for live performance. The next thing under the latency section is we want to get our buffer size set just right. Now, if you're using your computer live on stage for keys, uh, you want to make sure that you get the buffer size as low as possible. That's going to help with latency. And latency is the delay between when we hit a key and when we hear the sound. So typically for me, between 128 and 256 is typically good. If you're a really good piano player, you're used to something really responsive, you might need to go lower. But keep in mind, as you lower your buffer size, you're going to put more stress on the CPU of your computer. So you have to find a good balance with that. So I'm gonna just for now leave this at 512 and everything is set up and good to go with my interface. So how do I now route my tracks out of Ableton Live? So let's just say basic scenario, I wanna route each track one to one. So I'm gonna to go to sidechain here, go to audio two, external out, and I'm just gonna choose output one. And then I'll go to my next stem here, do audio two, external out, output two. Now, this is great if you're building a master set and you're not going to bring in suddenly a, a 14th track and have to figure out where that gets routed to. Uh, but this is really good if you're going to have a set set of 10 tracks and you always want to route that way. The other thing you could do, even if you're using an audio interface with multiple outs, is leave all your tracks set to master and then change your master out to be a stereo pair and then change your click if you're using Ableton Live's uh, built-in click. Uh, to three or something other than that main output that's going to allow you to separate that. Uh, if you have a click track, then you can go in and route that click track the same way I did the metronome. External out and then route it to three, which works great. Now finally though, if you're moving live uh, files between sets or you wanna use uh, a different number of tracks every single file, maybe one file you have 14, the next one you have 32, which that's a lot of tracks, but it's possible, then that's when I would suggest you use sends and returns to route your audio. Here's how that works. So what I wanna do is create a few return tracks. So I'm gonna go up to the create menu and do insert return track. And then I wanna show my return track. And I have four returns right now, that's perfectly fine. But I wanna go through and make sure all my returns have uh, no effects on them, which is great. And then I'm gonna go ahead and label these uh, stereo pairs. So I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, eight. Then I'm gonna go through each of these and route them uh, accordingly. So I'm gonna do external out for this first one, it's gonna be one, two. External out for the next one, which is three, four. 
external out for the next one, you get the idea of five, six, and then finally seven, eight. Now the way that I assign individual tracks to those returns is I wanna show the sins and then I'm gonna go through each of my tracks and I want to uh, turn up a sin to say, go to this track. So I don't want my sidechain track going anywhere, but for this stem, let's go to the first set. This one, let's go here. We'll do three, and then we'll just go around and jump through some of these. Now what's great about this is this allows me to route my stems uh, one time to a return. It allows me to route a group of stems to different return tracks. And then what I can also do is go in and group these stems, right? So that they just become one song. And then what I can do is change audio to sins only so that the audio is only going to the sends, and then I still have this volume control over the entire output. So I have separate outputs, I have the entire volume control with that fader, but the best part of this is once I make this setting, uh, as long as my returns stay the same outputs, then I can create a template and drag songs between it and I never have to reroute my audio. It's gonna save you tons and tons of time. So if you want more tricks and tips of how to speed up your usage of Ableton Live on stage, kind of best practices, then make sure to head to fromstudiotostage.com where you can start a free seven day trial, get access to every single course in the catalog, join our private Facebook community where you can interface with other people looking to use Ableton Live on stage. And then finally you get access to a private call each month with just the subscribers where we talk about issues we're having with Ableton Live, things we learned, uh, and then I'll also share some things that I learned that week with Ableton Live. I think you'll really enjoy it. So thanks so much for watching this tutorial. I hope to see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.